Welcome back to the channel. This is Trady Storm, and you are watching first part of What If Naruto Became the Supreme Being. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. Most of the time, things were quiet in the main chambers of the one called Ains in the Great Tomb of Nazarick. He was sitting in his chair and looking over some papers that Sivas had just given him. Ains was an undead skeleton lord. He was known as a warrior of the wizard class who could easily cast some of the most powerful spells in the world. When he used one of his spells called, Create Greater Object, he could even become a warrior class fighter. This let him avoid the problems he was having as a wizard and take on a more weapon-based look. When he was a skeleton wizard, his clothes were not as big as they used to be. He decided to make his robes smaller so that they only covered his basic body shape and didn't have big shoulder pads. From there, he had two glowing orbs where his pads ended on his shoulders. His dark red eyes glowed with a lot of power, and the great Ains on Gown's golden staff, which was thought to be one of the strongest things in the world, stood next to him. Ains was busy these days with things that no longer interested him. He had won against the great slain theocracy, gathered powerful warriors to his side, and won against all the major kingdoms. Now, he was the only one who could rule the land. After he did this, he got tired of just sitting around and doing nothing, and there was no one left to really fight him. From his point of view, everything was too simple, and he wanted something else to happen. More than anything, he wanted to fight someone or find a new place to take over and destroy. Someone knocked on the door to his office, and he looked up. Come in, he said. The doors opened, and a man with black hair, pointy ears, and a red and white suit walked in. He had a black tail behind him, and his diamond eyes were hidden under glasses that covered them. What can I do for you, Demiurge? The man asked as he adjusted his gloves. Well, I wanted to warn you about, the tomb began to shake because explosions were happening on one of the main floors. They're up to no good again, aren't they? The man asked with a smile. Yes, from what I've heard, they're fighting over who will be your main wife, sir. But if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you something. Ains thought he knew what this was about, but he wanted to make sure. Well, I was wondering why you haven't tried to have a child yet, my lord. This would help all of us because it would give the girls something to do and keep us from always having to fix the tomb. Ains sighed. If I could demiurge, I would, but I don't have a penis because I'm dead. That means, Ains said with a nod of the head. Demiurge pushed his glasses up and said, yes, I can't have my own kids. I see, my lord. Thank you for telling me that. It shows that you trust me, and I'm grateful for that. Ains nodded his head and asked, is that all? Who could it be this time? From what I saw, Albedo, Shaltir, and Zeshi are all fighting, and the maids are mostly staying out of the way. Kokaitis and Victim are keeping an eye on them to make sure they are stopped when they need to be. Ains thought back to the day Zeshi came into the tomb and said, I see. He beat her a long time ago, when the slain theocracy was being set up, and then went on to beat the strongest person in this world. After that, the lowly couldn't stop thinking about marrying him and having his child, but the other girls wanted it first, so they fought her for this right. Compared to them, the fight was even on both sides, and he could see that wars were getting worse over time. Before Ains could go to the lower floors to fix the problem, he sensed something strange in the room. Demiurge to my side now. The demon didn't know what was bothering his master but he quickly appeared next to him. Get ready because we're about to have visitors from other planets. But how, my lord, is the tomb guarded? By all other means, yes, but not by gods. A skeleton-like creature with a dagger in its mouth appeared out of thin air and floated in the air. Next to it was a floating old man with rippled eyes and a black staff, standing next to a woman in a white robe that was covered in a magical light. What do you do? You should know us, Ains, since you were once from our world. Demiurge could tell that these three were different from the tomb, but they were still weaker than Ains. This meant that the supreme beings were really stronger than the gods of the worlds. I don't know what you're talking about, but I think I know who you two, Kami and Shinigami, are, except for the old man. Both gods and the old man smiled. My name is Hagoromo, or in your previous life, I was the sage of six paths, but you already know that, right, Naruto? Ains let out all of his power, which made the gods move back and brought the whole tomb to his side, where everyone was ready to fight. A woman with black hair and horns on her head asked, Who are you? The people who dared to stand in front of her beloved Lord Ains got glares from her golden eyes. How dare you talk to our master like that? 
said a small girl with big breasts who was wearing a dark red dress and carrying an umbrella. Her eyes were shining at the three beings in front of her. They were being looked at by a blue ice beetle man who was ready to fight if they did anything. Two dark elf twins were getting their weapons ready for battle, and the maids were doing the same thing next to them. A small pink, white, and black-haired lolicon with a two-headed scythe was standing there with her eyes turned away from each other and giving off a psychotic look. Even the butler, who looked like an old man and was missing an eye, was staring down at the women in front of him. We apologize. How do you know my old name? No one, not even my brothers, knew that name. I forgot that name for a reason, and now you're here to bring it up again. How dare you? Give me one reason not to kill you all. The gods knew it was a bad sign, and he was not happy. He didn't want to remember his past as Naruto Uzumaki, which was even more important. Lord Ains, who is Naruto? He asked Albedo. Then he sighed and told Albedo that it was time for them to know the truth about his birth. That was my human name when I was first born. I was a human who could control chakra, which is a mix of spiritual and physical energy that can do things like magic. But at the time, I was holding a powerful demon. Gama and the others were starting to figure out what was going on. Really? You were human, my lord? Lord Ains was always kind to children, humans, and people who did good things for him. They never found out why, but it was a sign that he still cared about something from his past and didn't want it to happen to someone else. They realized that when they talked badly about people, they were insulting their lord and would have to make up for it later. Yes, I was, and with the demon in my stomach, I was hated and treated like rubbish. My parents died to protect the village and seal the monster away in me to save everyone. They were spit on, and the only people who really cared about me were the former leader of the village and a woman I met many years ago. She was also a cursed child who was always treated like rubbish at all times of the day. Yes, Naruto, and we're very sorry that we let this happen to you. We had no idea that everyone in the village would act this way towards you. Yes, who would have thought that everyone on that mission was in on your death except for Ayame and Anko? She asked Kami. When you died and it was confirmed, Ayame found out that her father was using the stand to weaken you and kill you in the end. She hated her father for doing this and left in the middle of the day to become a famous cook in spring, where she has been working hard to grow her business. Hagoromo stepped forward and said, Interesting, but what does this have to do with me? Naruto, you were supposed to save this world and break the chains of darkness that hold it together. But your death made me realize that everything I did was wrong. It is time for the age of shinobi to end and a new age to begin. I see, but I'm not going back to that world. I don't have anything worth fighting for there, and I don't want to be their savior. This time, Shinigami was the one who said, Not even if we promise you something in exchange. Ains narrowed his eyes at him. What are you offering? The others were going to say they didn't agree, but they saw that Ains was serious, so they didn't say anything. We'll let you do whatever you want with the world and kill whoever you want, and we'll finally give you the one thing you've always wanted, a body to have kids with. When Demiurge told the women that Lord Ains couldn't have children anymore, they were shocked and sad that they would never know what it would be like to have sex with their leader. A human body is nice, but what else would it have? Hagoromo held up a pair of eyes that looked like his own but had the Sharingan Tomos in them and were slowly spinning. These are the Rinne Sharingan. They are the most powerful eyes in the world, and only I have them. My mother had one in her forehead, but these are the only complete set. If you do this for us, I will not only give you your tomb, freedom to do what you want, and a human body, but I will also give you these eyes so you can use all the forms of chakra. Ains thought about it and finally decided that he wanted to see some of his old allies and friends again. Okay, but we also need protection from chakra. Kami nodded and waved her hand, and they all started to glow. You are now immune to illusions and mind control, and you can ignore jutsu up to about S class, which is about 6th tier magic in your terms. Alright, Ains told his followers. My guardians, we now have a new land to explore and conquer. I expect you all to help me take this world as my own. Albedo said with a smile, and they all bowed to him. We swore allegiance to you, our lord, and we will follow you wherever you go. We promise to be by your side in this time of a new dawn. The rest said the same thing, and now they were ready for war. Ains then said to them. Let's get this over with, they said. Okay, the two gods said, nodding their heads. We're sorry about everything, Naruto. We wish you the best for the future. 
They left this old world with a bright light, leaving it to the humans who were still there. Country of Uzu Ains saw that they were in the land of whirlpools, also called Land Uzu, when he went back to his old world. This is the land where his ancestors used to live, and he was happy to finally get it back in working order. After seeing how the whole place looked, the guardians started to make sure they were safe and had ways to deal with anyone who might come their way. One of the Pleiades, though, saw that Ains had changed. Lord Ains, your body. Everyone turned to see Ains the skeleton get a human body, but it was darker than they thought it would be. When he was a human, his skin was the same color, but his eyes were dark red and had two black rings in them. Everyone in the room was a foot shorter than him, and his dark gray hair was spiked. Even though he wore a dark black and gray robe that covered most of his body, his fingers were like claws. Huh, what do you know? It's better than my original human body, right? Naruto felt his chakra coming back. But he had no way to use his magic, which left him scratching his head. So it looks like I can only use chakra in this form, but I can use magic to my heart's content in my original form. That's interesting. Naruto turned to the others and asked, what do you all think of my new form? They all bowed and smiled at their leader, Shaltir, who spoke with a blush on her face. Beauty incarnate, master, you radiate power that is out of this world, even in this form. You may look human, but you are more than that, and we will always remember that. Koiktus was next. Aura and her brother both thought the same thing, but Aura spoke for both of them. Even in this state, my brother and I know you are the real supreme being, and that's all that matters to us. Zeshi smiled. Albedo growled at her, it doesn't matter to me, my lord. You are the truest form of power, and even in that state, I would be happy with any child we have. Yes, except for her having your child, your form doesn't fool me, and I know you take this form to please all of us, which is more than I could have ever hoped for. The rest of the room agreed, and Naruto was happy to show them his new eyes, which had changed into rings with tomos in them. With this power, no one in the elemental nations can stop me. Naruto laughed for a bit before coughing into his hand. He looked at his followers and said, now we get down to business. Everyone that is not on assignment is to work around the clock to prepare our defenses and prevent intruders from reaching the inner sanctum of the tomb. Of course, my lord, I'll leave now. Come, Beta, the maid with dark skin said with a smile. Yes, ma'am, let's go have some fun. They left, and Naruto looked around at the rest of the room. The rest of you stay here and plan defenses like I told you before. Albedo, you come with me. We're going to find my dear friend Gara and show him that a new power is at work in this world. Of course, Lord Ains, she replied. While we're out in the world, you should only call me Menma, right? She nodded, and without waiting a second, she changed into her dark armor form and took out her war axe. Let's go, Naruto said. He then made a Kamui hole and sucked them both in. When they got to the desert, they went straight to the village of Suna, where they saw that many of the buildings were smoking. Stop. He turned around and saw two gate guards, one of whom he knew to be Baki. Say your name and what you're doing right now. Menma smiled. I'm sorry to come at a bad time, but I was sent here by a friend to find a man named Gara and give him a message. May I ask what happened? Yes, Gara has been taken, and the village is in a panic because our case cage has been taken. At his age, it looks like he can be trusted to be a leader. Do you know who took him? Yes, we know it's the Akatsuki, but we don't have the resources right now to go after them. Yes, that's why they call us elites to help their worthless asses, Naruto said. When he turned his head, he saw a group of people he didn't want to see again until he was killing them. The cocky Sasuke Uchiha was standing there. He had the power of a chunin, but it wasn't anything special. He would compare him to Clementine, which was a nice thing to do. This fool would be easy for her to kill, and that was a good thing to say about the girl. Even though she was a mutt, she was better than this fool in his group. They would be killed without a chance and treated like useless torture dolls or zombies in the end. Yeah, Sasuke is here to show them what a real shinobi is like, so go away, loser. Behind him was a girl with pink hair named Sakura, and Ains could only sigh. Her power was barely that of a chunin at this point, and Tsunade had trained her at some point. She was supposed to be her student, but she was only a chunin. This means she wasn't training as hard as she should have been in general. From there, he could see Kakashi reading his book while keeping an eye on Albedo. Kakashi was ignoring what was going on. 
He hated this man more than anyone else because he was the one who killed him. From what he learned about Kami's memories, he was called a hero, but when he told Sasuke he killed his best friend, it didn't let him move on to the next stage of his eyes, so he was cheated out of that. He then started training him as much as he wanted, with help from Jiraiya. But as soon as he learned the Rasengan, Naruto knew that this fool was being set up to be Hokage. Before he would give them his parents' notes or his father's moves, he would kill him and everyone else. But Kami told him that the Toads had them and that they wouldn't give them up because if they tried to bully them, the Toads would destroy Konoha as a whole. The slugs helped them and cut off Tsunade because she hurt her godson and the child of Kashina, who was also a summoner, even if she could only call up minor members of the clan. Finally, there was a boy with pale skin who smiled at Naruto in a fake way. Naruto knew that this boy was a root ninja for Danzo, and he planned to kill him as soon as he could. Albedo was mad that this girl was talking to her master, so she was about to use her power to attack, but Naruto stopped her by shaking his head. Whatever, I don't have time to waste on the trash around me right now. Baki-san, do you know anything about Gara that could help me find him? The man nodded and gave Naruto his hat. Naruto looked at it and used his new chakra senses to smile. I see they have him in a cave a little bit away from here. Don't worry, I'll bring your leader back. Oh, and take this, Naruto handed him a red potion that was made from his blood, give this to Konkuro and it should heal him from his poisoning. I heard rumors on the way here that he ran into someone who was a dangerous poison user so I thought I might as well give you this. We're going. Come on, Albedo, let's go. In a flash, they were both gone, kicking up sand as they went. This surprised everyone, who wondered how they got so fast. Sasuke was jealous and would ask how he could be as fast as Guy. Sakura thought Sasuke could do the same thing. Kakashi was worried that someone was faster than Guy and was going to tell Konoha. Sai was going to report this to Danzo and tell him what he had found out about the two unknowns. Cave. Naruto saw the cave and the stone blocking the entrance to the room where they were sealing it. Interesting, no doubt a good seal, but nothing I can't handle, he said. With a single punch, he broke the boulder and walked into the dusty room. In it, Naruto saw a blonde-haired man with an eye that looked like metal and was covered by his hair. He was sitting next to a red-haired man who gave off the feeling of someone who was no longer alive. It's strange that Gara was taken here, the blonde glared. Who the hell are you? Naruto smiled. Hello, you stupid humans. My name is Menma, but that's neither here nor there. I'll give you one chance to surrender and hand over my friend there. If you don't, I can promise you'll all die by my hands. This is me being kind, he was hit with an explosive clay spider. Ha. Huh. Take that fool, HN. That's what you get for talking down to higher ups. Sasori laughed at the childish act until he saw the smoke go away. They and the holograms were shocked to see the intruder still standing with only minor damage to his clothes and no scratches on his body. So that's your answer. Albedo, take care of the clay user, and I'll handle the puppet user. Yes, Lord Menma, the dark armored woman replied. She quickly spun her axe around and moved closer to the blonde bomber. What the hell? His body was cut in half, but it turned into clay and exploded. On the other side of the cave, he showed up. Ha. Huh. Bitch fell for the basics. You're not so great, armored B asterisk TCH. A kick to the back of his head knocked him down. When he looked up, he saw the woman in armor standing there with no damage to her armor. How? She couldn't move, so how did she get away from the explosion? Albedo quickly got closer and swung her axe at him again to cut him in half, but he quickly moved out of the way. From there, he started throwing multiple attacks that were very dangerous. Each tried to get to her and kill her, but she dodged the explosions and sent them back at him, making him keep moving. You don't have a chance, human. Fighting me is a waste of time, and you should stop doing it. No. I won't lose to some whore in armor. He yelled. His eyes glowed gold, which scared the crap out of everyone else in the room. We failed for now, but we'll soon get the one tail and the other tailed beast. Didera didn't know how, but he didn't want the leader to see him fail now. So, he quickly called up a clay dragon in the cave and made it attack her. But as soon as the dragon got close to her, she stopped playing with him. By letting out her magical aura, she was able to make the dragon disappear without harming it. This gave her the chance to try to kill it again. But he was out of chakra this time because he had used it all up in the attacks before this one. 
So, she cut off his head. Huh what you know? Death really is a piece of art like a bang it's only for a second. He smiled before his skull was crushed underneath Albedo's boot. Worthless bug, should have known going against me was futile and died like the bug he was. Turning her head she saw her master was not struggling as much as she did with her opponent. She was used to magic users, armor users, and melee users who fought in a straightforward way. This was different. In her mind, it would take some time to get used to. On the other hand, Naruto was dealing with Sasori until he showed himself to be a human puppet. Naruto didn't care at all, and he quickly and easily killed the rest of his puppets before piercing his heart. It looks like you're stronger than I thought. I'll tell you this much, Orochimaru's spy is coming to meet me in a few days. Be careful, because he might not be as loyal as I thought. The man fell to the ground, and Naruto laughed. When Naruto saw the dead bomber, he turned to Albedo and said, I don't care about the snake. I'll deal with him when I'm done with everything else and ready to fight him. Bring the puppet master's body and the puppet's bodies back to the tomb. We might be able to use them. Of course, I'll handle this right away, Ains said with a smile. Thanks, Albedo, she said. The woman became very upset. Thank you my lord. Your praise is valued for someone like me. Please let me know if you are wanting to reward me later with your new body. Naruto sweat dropped at her going off in her own world. Yeah, she's off in her own world again, which is great. Naruto turned his attention to Gara when he saw her dreaming about all the things they were going to do together in the future. But when he looked at his seal and saw that it was getting weaker, he changed into his skeletal form. He did a diagnosis on him and saw that the seal was broken and that if nothing was done, neither he nor the biju would live. Albedo stand back. Pulling herself out of her dreams she saw him in his skeletal form and he was casting some kind of ritual on the red hair body and without warning the entire cave filled with a bright light. Seal the deal. Once the magic and light went away, she saw that the boy with red hair now had a tail and small ears on his head. Ains groaned. That was a spell I found in one of the old books in the tomb years ago. It lets a person fuse two different elements if the seal is weak enough and the bond is strong. He then turned to Albedo and said, in his current state he is the one-tailed demon and on par with most of the biju now. But he will be out for a couple of hours. I shall stay here until he has recovered, but until then, would you go back to the tom? Do what you say, my lord. He was waiting for his friend to wake up while Albedo left through a gate. Wave. The once thriving trading country was now under attack. The hidden leaf village attacked the village with a full-scale war. They not only took over the village, but they also changed the name of the bridge to honor their great savior, killed their bridge builder Tizuna, and planned to kill his family. From there, Senju, Konoha, and Uchiha flags were flying over the side of the bridge. The two guards of the Eternal Gate were sitting there, bored to death. Ketsu sighed and said, well, the invasion went well. Yeah, but at least we get to change this village for the better, and renaming the bridge the Great Konoha Bridge sounds nice, don't you think? His friend nodded his head. They never liked Naruto, so why should they leave something on earth with his name on it? But they both saw someone coming towards the gate that was built to keep people out of the village at the bridge. It was a small girl with big breasts who was dressed in red and wore a red hat. Her eyes were bright red and had slits in them. Next to her was a girl with tanned skin and golden eyes who was dressed as a very sexy maid. But the girl in the red dress was holding an umbrella and grinning a little bit. Stop. Ketsu was told not to let anyone into the village, so he had to turn these two people away or kill them. But that made him wonder where the guards on the other side of the bridge were or if they did something to them. When Shaltier saw the gate guards, he could see that they were nothing special and, for the most part, he found them disgusting. Please take care of them. I'd rather not waste my time. Yes, Lady Shaltier. Suddenly, both men were standing in front of the woman in the maid outfit. She had a large weapon that looked like a scepter in her hands, and with one swing, she cut off their heads. They didn't know they were dead until their heads hit the floor. Oh, they died too quickly. I thought Lord Naruto said these beings were stronger than this. I can tell that there are people in the village who are stronger than these two. Beta, kill the ones in the crowd and those who dare to come near me. My brides will take care of the rest, killing or capturing those who try to run away or fight back while I deal with the group's leaders. Yes, Lady Shaltier, she said with a bright smile, and two pale women with dark eyes and big breasts appeared next to Shaltier. 
Inside the village, the people were huddled together to watch as the leader of the shinobi who were attacking their village killed more of their own people. Yash, now that we've gotten rid of the demon's influence on this village, we can teach them the new ways of the young. Easy Lee, if these people know what's good for them, they'll never say that monster's name in front of us again. This was easy because we sneaked across the bridge and killed the samurai here, but I'm worried about the consequences because they were from the land of iron and Mifune is not someone to mess with. Don't worry, Nara. They were meant to fall today, and the rest of the world will see that they will fall to us as well. A man with a scar over his nose and a purple-haired Anbu with a cat mask on her face walked out of the group and stood next to Tsunami and Inari, who were on their knees. Even though Inari was hurt and swollen, he was staring them down. Is there anything you want to say before you die, prisoner? Inari looked him in the eyes and spat in them. Iruka snarled, Yes, I'll see you in hell, you traitor. Cat do it. Tsunami screamed. Before her sword could hit the child, someone standing next to the child said, No, please. Humans are such simple creatures. You think you're stronger because you invaded a trading nation? Haha, <laughs> that's funny. You pick on the weak to make yourself feel stronger. Who are you and why are you meddling in Konoha's business? Shaltir turned to Uruka. She knew from Naruto and some of the information that this man was once a brother figure to her lord, but he betrayed that trust when he tried to kill him. So, she was told to torture and then kill this fool, knowing that Lord Ains would have the last laugh in the end. Well, fool, my name is Shaltir, and I'm a servant of Lord Ains, the only true ruler of this world. He is a supreme being born from this world and is feared by the gods. He sent me here to deal with the trash in this country. I thought you'd be stronger, but it looks like I was wrong. Two women appeared at her side and quickly moved towards the cat wearing Anbu and her group. Before Monkey and Boar could move, they killed them, and when Snake came up behind them, they killed him quickly by slamming their hand into his chest. Soon, the shinobi in the crowd heard a scream and turned to see a maid with a scepter weapon killing their men. Well, it looks like I'll get to have some fun, she said. Don't let me down. She yelled as she charged. One of the top officers on this mission, Shikamaru, could not believe it. In a matter of seconds, four people killed all of their people. It was clear that the one in red was in charge and that the others were following in some way. They knew they had to do something, but they didn't know how. That's when the girl in the red dress stopped Aruka from stabbing her with a kanai by making the nail on her pinky finger grow longer and deflecting the blade. She yawned into the hand she wasn't using and looked at the man. Is that all you have? How disappointing. I thought you shinobi were better than this. I guess the reports were wrong. Humans are bugs after all, she said with a cruel smile, and after knocking the kanai away again, she quickly ripped his arm off. Blood got all over the place, which made her punch him in the gut and knock him down. He coughed up blood and was also bleeding from his wound. She laughed. That was fun. Now you know your place, bug. Before you die, I want you to hear this, she said as she bent over and whispered in his ear. Naruto-sama always gets even, fool. No you died a traitor, she said. Before he could answer, she stomped on his head, which caused it to explode into a pool of blood. Iruka. Kat tried to go save him or get back at the girl, but the two women she was up against were stronger. They quickly took her weapons away and forced her to her knees so she could see what was going on in the village. Shaltier looked at Team 9 and Shikamaru, the other two shinobi who were still standing, after she was done talking to the old teacher who was being a fool. This group of people used to be friends, and she knew that her master wanted to kill them himself, but he never said they couldn't die in wave. So, she went with her gut and went up to them with a smile on her face. So who's going to be the next one to try me? Lee didn't wait and ran. Leaf Hurricane, you will pay for killing my friend. She easily blocked his kick, grabbed his ankle, and threw him back to his friends. He fell to his hands and feet and growled at her. She was strong, almost as strong as Guy, but he was sure he was stronger. Tenten started her attack quickly by throwing Kanai and Shurikens at her, but she blocked them with her pinky finger and looked bored. Is this all you've got? Throwing weapons? You're so weak, it's no wonder weapon users laugh at you. This made Tenten angry but Neji was already in place and Shikamaru was already ready. Yeah, but it was a good distraction. Kagemajutsu worked. Now, Neji. The boy ran at her and hit her in the throat, forehead, and heart. Fall, know that it was fate that helped me today, he said. 
But she didn't fall, she just yawned. Shaltier walked over to Neji and said, so that's it. You're going to hold me still while you charge in and hit me in the chest. Shikamaru was shocked that she wasn't even held in place. Neji tried to respond quickly by throwing more blows at her, but she was easily blocking them. From there, she got close to him and punched him in the stomach, making him get up off the ground. But Tetan did something about it. He threw another kanai, which exploded and lit up the area. At this time, Lee grabbed his friend and brought him over to him. Shaltier yawned again. Come on, please tell me you have more than that. I'm not even using my real power yet, and this is making me sleepy. You know what? I'm going to deal with you now and be done with it. She was walking up to them when she heard some kanai and shuriken hit the ground near her feet. When she looked up, she saw that several chunin and junin had just shown up. Team leader Shikamaru Nara run take your allies and run back to Konoha. Are you insane you all will die? Yes, but Konoha must know about this future threat, and that's enough for our sacrifice to mean something. At this point, Shaltier was so bored she was crying, and she finally snapped. You know what? Fuck this. I'm done messing around. With that, a dark red aura formed around her body, and she gained a dark, evil presence that made the other shinobi their fear god. Shikamaru made the call in a matter of seconds. Let's go, we need to get back, they said, and they jumped over the buildings as the remaining Junin and Chunin did their best to kill the monsters that were attacking their people, who were trying to save this country that had lost hope. All of this was for nothing, though, because they were easily killed, and Shaltier was growling at the bodies. Not even worth the fucking trouble. Beta, who's left? The werewolf smiled. Well, the villagers are safe, but we still have this one person left. She is the strongest of the group, and she doesn't seem to hate anyone. She turned her head and looked at the woman with purple hair. She saw that she didn't hate her master. I see. What are you called? I won't tell you, Shaltier said with a smile. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you did or not, because this was going to happen whether you did or not. Without warning, she bit her neck and quickly drained her blood and power into her body. Within seconds, the woman's skin changed color, and she became a vampire bride with purple hair and red eyes. She turned her head and yelled, Welcome to the family. People of Wave, know this. You are free from the horror that is Konoha, and the world will know about this treachery. From now on, you serve Lord Ains on gown. The people were confused, but they figured they were better than the Konoha shinobi. People started shouting, All hail Lord Ains. And Shaltier smiled. In this new world, there are so many tasty people to eat. I hope my lord lets me kill some more soon. Soon, my beloved master will own this world, just like he owns all the other worlds. Within a few hours, word got around that wave had been killed, and the flag of Ain's gown flew high in the sky, showing that a new superpower was in play. Naruto watched as Gara got up and looked at him with his eyes full of confusion. What do you do? Well, Gara, I don't blame you for not recognizing me. We haven't seen each other since the time of the rescue mission to get Sasuke Uchiha. What are you talking about? How do you know about that mission? Naruto used his magic to bring up his old headband and show it to Gara. This made Gara's senses go haywire. Naruto. Gara got off the ground and gave him a hug. Yes, it's me. It's good to see you're doing well, brother. It's good to see you're still alive, Naruto, but how is this possible? The last we heard, Kakashi said you were killed by Sasuke and thrown into the river, never to be seen again. Naruto narrowed his eyes. That fool killed me before I was reborn in a new land. He kicked me into a hole, sending my body plummeting to the bottom. The impact killed me, but I was reborn as a man named Ains and took over his power. Oh, I see. What did you look like back then? Naruto went back to his skeleton form. How do you feel? If I'm being honest, it looks pretty scary. I know, and that's why Kami and the others gave me a human body, among other reasons. Naruto turned back into a human and blushed a little because he had just said the real reason he had been given a human body again. He mostly wanted to know what it was like to have sex, even though at this point he was about 1000 years old. He is basically the world's oldest virgin, and now that he has the chance to change that, he wants to do so. Okay, Naruto, but what happened here? Naruto sighed. Me and a friend killed two members of the Akatsuki. I think their names were Sasori and Didera. 
since you were almost dead from what happened, I fused Shukaku and you together to make your new, better body. Gara raised an eyebrow, but when he heard the tail swishing behind him, he sighed. Can I still put these away? Naruto shook his head. Just think about it, it might work. Gara thought about how he looked normally, and his tail and ears went away. Cool, let's get you back to Suna, he said, helping him to his feet. When they came out of the cave, they saw Team 7 and an old woman standing there. Sasuke was sneering at him, Sakura was mad because Sasuke was, Sai was smiling, and Kakashi was looking at him like he was crazy. Gara made the woman happy. Case Cage Sama you are safe. Gara nod his head. Yes, thanks to my friend here. He and his ally helped me get through this. He turned his head to Team 7 and tried to hide his anger from them. Then he turned back to Chio and said, please get Sasori's body from the cave and bring it back to Suna so it can be examined. Konoha Shinobi, don't mess with the body or our daimyo will charge you with stealing Suna's secrets. Sasuke growled at him, but Naruto snapped his fingers and a bright light took them away. That jerk, what did he think he was doing talking to us like that? That asshole should be grateful that we are here to try to save his shithole of a country. Sakura was shouting louder and louder, but Chio just laughed. She floated into the cave to claim the bodies of her grandson, the parents of the child, and other bodies he had found over the years. To her surprise, he was not there. Maybe they were killed by the mysterious stranger? It made more sense for it to be gone for good than for someone to use it in the future for their own purposes. So she said a small prayer for him and went back to the village. When everyone got back to Suna, Gara was sitting at his desk with the money needed to pay for the mission. Here is your payment. Actually, since we helped Konkura with his health problem, that's another payment, said Ains. Kakashi patted himself on the back to try to get more money for the village, but Ains, as Konoha Shinobi call him, said, that's not true. I gave him the special medicine that helped him get better, Kakashi said with a growl. Gara narrowed his eyes and growled back, this has nothing to do with you, Ains. No, but I know from Baki that he is telling the truth, so I won't pay you another cent. You are free to leave, so please do. Kakashi laughed at him, and he and his team walked out the door as Sasuke glared at him. Where is that iron bitch you were with earlier? Did she die? He asked with an arrogant smirk, but all Ains could do was snort. Please, weaklings like them and Itachi aren't a problem. She killed an S-class while you were too late to show up. Sasuke turned to attack him, but Kakashi stopped him. Watch out, Ains. Lesser people have insulted the Uchiha and died horribly because of it, Ains said with a smirk. Please, I'm not afraid of your clan or one person, which doesn't make a clan if I'm right. So go puff your chest somewhere else, because Kumo and Iwa together are probably more trouble for you idiots. Kakashi growled and took a step forward before Ains was in front of him with his hand on his face. Make one more move, and I'll cut off your head right there, Gara's aura finally lit up the room. Kakashi, get out of this room and leave my village right now. Kakashi bit his tongue and walked away with his team, head held high. Gara let out a sigh, sat down, and looked at Ains. So, Naruto, what do you want to talk about? Naruto smiled. I'm here to tell you that the shinobi era is coming to an end, and in its place will be a new kingdom. The gods have decided it's necessary, and I'm their will on this world. Are you willing to give up your kingdom to protect them from me? You don't need to ask Naruto, but I can't just leave my alliance, no matter how much I want to. We need protection from the other nations, so unless you can find another nation to help us, we're at their mercy. Naruto thought about it. You gave me the job of finding you new allies, and I promise you'll have them by the end of the month. Naruto made a small portal and teleported back to the tomb. Gara sighed when he saw the paperwork. If you could teach me how to get rid of paperwork, I would follow you to hell and back. Tomb of Nazurik. In his skeleton form, Naruto was sitting in his office. He had read some papers that told him what was going on in the elemental nations at the moment. Even more so since his leaving seems to have had a big effect on this world and caused a lot of big problems to come up over time. For one thing, Kumo and Iwa were always making fun of Konoha, and Sasuke had angered them by attacking people from their country and saying, I'm a Uchiha, and they were in my way. This was enough for Konoha to declare war on them. Neither country liked this, and they warned Konoha that war was coming if this kept up, but Konoha didn't listen. One of the most important things they talked about was the alliances they had lost. Naruto could use his return as Ains to get them on his side, but he wasn't sure what he could promise them. 
Even though he didn't want to admit it, he needed a shinobi nation to help him take over the world. Who, though? Even with the help of the tomb, none of the small nations had enough people to be a real superpower, and most of the other nations were either worse than them or just stupid. Gara was stuck helping Konoha, so he had to find someone else to help him get his own protection from the hidden leaf. The doorbell rings. Come in, Naruto said to Albedo as he walked into the room. He was still looking at the papers. Hello, Lord Ains. Even though the tomb knew who their master was, they still called him Lord Ains. More in the sense that Ains, not Naruto, was their real leader and master. Naruto agreed, but he told them not to say his old name outside of the tomb if that was the case, so that people wouldn't come after them. Even though he was sure they could easily kill everyone, he still wanted to have the upper hand. So he had to make a deal with another country in order to move their troops while hiding his own. She dropped the papers on his desk and asked, Albedo, what do you have for me? Here are some reports from the twins and Sivas, my lord, the woman you're looking for has been seen. I think you said her name was Anko, right? Yes, Spring is the country she ran away to a long time ago, right? She asked with a smile. Yes, my lord. As the Dayamo's personal ninja, she has a lot of protection, and no one would dare say her name. Especially since they found out that a man named Danzo had some of his men set up to kill her if she dared to defy him and Konoha as a whole. Luckily, with the finding of the spies, they have reason to believe that the other nations are the same way, which is why Iron. That's good to know. As soon as it's safe for her to come to me, I'll go get her. Yes, my lord. It also seems like the other nations are having a lot of problems. First, the mist is in a crisis because the war is over and their two demon ships have gone missing. The twins were able to catch the six-tail container, but we don't know where the three-tail container is at the moment. Most likely he is dead and his demon has been taken out. If not, he is dead and the demon will return in the near future. Unfortunately, we have no way of knowing that. Tell Koikutas to watch Mist in case they try something or the demon shows up. Then I want him to capture the creature and bring it here, I will not let the biju be sealed again. He rubbed his own stomach and sighed. They said that his death had never happened before and that Kayubi might have tried to save him as he was dying. Naruto wasn't sure, but the memories he got from Hagoromo and the dreams he was having about it made him want to think the fox had some good in him. Yes, my lord. We were able to separate six tails from the rest of the group, and he is now resting peacefully in his own room. The beast is now living in the caverns below, where it is enjoying the peace and quiet we have given it. Good. They might not be as strong as me, but they're a good ally to have. Thanks to the research Uzu has given me, I've found a way to break the Mokaton, Sharingan, and Death Reaper seals. This will let them be free again and do what nature intended them to do, protect the world from all threats. As expected, my lord, you have an unmatched ability to understand the world and the things in it. Yes, but have we found any big countries that we could work with to take over the elemental nations? Demiurge told me that there might be one, Kumo, she said, handing him the report. From what he found out, the country is a case of hatred and chaos. The former cage refused to turn his two demon vessels into pawns for war for the Lightning Day Ayamo, so he was replaced by someone else. This man has become the most hated man in the country, and they are on the verge of a civil war in this state. So, if I moved in and got rid of him, I'd have the former cage in my hands and might gain a powerful ally. Yes, my lord. Naruto's eyes in his skull face lit up, and he turned to Albedo. Albedo bowed to him. Tell Zesh she's coming with me. It's time to free a nation and start our conquest of this world. Of course, your will be done, my lord. Konoha. What the hell do you mean you lost Wave? Asked Tsunade, a big-breasted blonde woman, as she looked at the few Wave survivors left after the massacre. She thought it would be easy to go in, get rid of the samurai, and kill anyone who dared to question their authority. This would cause the Land of Iron to back off, and they would be able to trade seriously again. But it looks like someone got in the way, because most of her shinobi were killed and they were having a hard time with their Dayamo, who wasn't happy that Mifune, the leader of the samurai, said this happened while he was in charge. He was furious, and Tsunade heard all about it. As a result, they lost a lot of money and had to cut back on other things in their country. Yes, we were attacked, and they killed us all, Shikamaru said. He didn't like telling an angry woman what happened. Since the village killed their demon ship, she seemed to be getting more angry every day, and they were losing allies everywhere they went. 
Suna didn't leave because they didn't have anyone else to count on, but he had a feeling that wouldn't be the case for long. So you're telling me that four people showed up and killed Anbu, Junin, and Chunin all by themselves? Yes, Hokage-sama, you didn't see it. They were monsters and doing things that were way out of our league. Even Kat couldn't compete with the women there and was quickly killed, but I think she might still be alive since they didn't kill her right away with the rest of us. Then we could get her back, Shikamaru said with a sigh. No, we don't know if they're still there, and with tensions rising after this last attack, there's no doubt they're getting ready for another invasion. Going after her could start a new war, and if our past allies are any indication, Suna might join the fight and help us lose, Tsunade said with a growl. Fine, but what else are we supposed to do if you know everything? Kakashi and his team walked in without warning. Well, Suna wasn't as friendly as we had hoped, and we couldn't save Gara. What? Is he dead then? If someone else is in charge, we might be able to use that to our advantage. No, he's still alive, but someone else saved him. Who? Kakashi sighed. A teenager named Ains and someone named Albedo who was wearing armor and carrying a big war axe. I see, I wonder if Jiraiya knows anything about him. Suddenly, Jiraiya was standing in the window. I started looking around before you did, princess, when I heard rumors about this Ains guy and the attack on Wave. It seemed like too much a coincidence that they all happened at about the same time. And? I found nothing. This guy doesn't exist for some reason, and no one knows how to find him. He showed up in these places, and from what I could tell, he just disappeared. There was no sign of him, and the toads told me they'd never heard of him and wouldn't say anything else about him. Jiraiya was mad at the toads. In this case, they were on Naruto's side and said it wasn't fair that the boy was killed just because the Kyubi was sealed in his body. Sadly, this led to a long fight in which they refused to help Konoha and told him that if he didn't apologize to Minato and Kashina, they wouldn't help him again. Damn creatures. Ignoring this, Jiraiya-sama, do you think there might be a link between this attack and Gara being saved? He nodded his head. Yeah, and my gut tells me that if we don't deal with the situation soon, something big is coming our way. Shikamaru and Neji looked at each other. We don't know much about the women who attacked Wave, except that the short one with the umbrella was the leader of the group and easily killed most of our best men and women using only her speed and strength. Yeah, and from what I heard, she was also pretty busty, he said with a sly smile. Tsunade rubbed her head. The clan leaders and council will want to know what happened on this mission no matter what, Jiraiya said with a frown. They're going to ask us to do something, but we both know we can't because the spring Dayama is talking with ours about the attack, and he doesn't want to start a war if he can help it. That's true, but they're important to how the village works, so at least keep them in the loop. She got up and sent everyone out of the room except Jiraiya. Then she led them to the council chamber, where they saw the civilian council on one side, the clan head and shinobi council on the other, and the elders next to her. She began when she sat down. So the attack on Wave didn't start, he said. The room filled with yelling right away. How can this be? We sent some of our best shinobi there. If we had just sent Lord Sasuke, he would have quickly calmed down the crowds. His power would have stopped anyone who tried to stand up to him. Tsunade sighed. No matter what you think, it was a group of four. A girl with silver hair and red eyes, a woman in a maid's outfit, and two pale-skinned women. They came in over the bridge and easily killed everyone who was fighting them. But the most important thing is that they were immune to most chakra-based techniques. They broke the control of the shadow-possessing jutsu, were unaffected by the gentle fist style, and couldn't be hurt by the... Hiyashi was growling. Someone who could survive their clan's perfect fighting style could not be allowed to live. He would put a price on their heads and kill them before they could do anything else to shame his clan. Danzo, on the other hand, planned to send his route to Wave, find this woman, and bring her back to the lab so that she and the others could be tested on. So, he could make his own army stronger, become the only ruler of Konoha, and get rid of the other leaders. So, he would become the leader of the elemental nation, and no one would be able to challenge his way of life. Well, the Dayayamo are mad at us right now, and they're telling us not to do anything else or we'll lose all of our funding in a few minutes. Do you idiots know what that means? It means that the other nations will get the go-ahead to kill us before the next sunrise. Danzo stood up and said, then we have to do something. We have to find another demon vessel and train it to be our weapon, the man said. 
The scared person shook his head. Are you sure that's a good idea, Lord Danzo? The last one just died. He was a bad weapon. This one will be trained and conditioned to do what we want, no matter what. I promise you that. I already know that the Seven Tails is somewhere in the outer part of Taki, so she will be easy to catch. The council agreed with this, and Tsunade approved it but told him to take a team of rookies with them to get more experience in the pitch. This didn't bother him because he was going to get a new demon vessel to use, and maybe if the children saw his people in action, they would agree with him. When she gathered the shinobi she needed for this mission, she saw that all of the teens except Team 7 were there. She gave Team 7 the day off. The rest of Team 10, Choji, Ino, and Shikamaru, who didn't want to go back into the pitch yet. Hanada, Kiba, and Shino, who were also on Team 10. Hanada's eyes were cold and full of arrogance because she was a Hayuga. Kiba was attracted to her but also full of arrogance, while Shino was as calm as ever. On top of that, Team 9 was there, and everyone on it was either upset or happy to be on a new mission to forget the last one. As you all know, your mission is to help Danzo and his troops capture the seven-tailed Jinchuriki. Failure is not an option, do you understand? We need something to stop a war that could happen if the other countries have a biju, Ino said with a sigh. But why can't Sasuke-kun just use his Sharingan to control the beasts like Madara did? Tsunade shook her head. We don't know how Madara did that in the past, and any records of it were lost in the last wars. For now, we need you to go to Taki, grab the girl, and bring her back to be reprogrammed for the leaf. Now go. The team bowed and went to the gate, where they saw three teams of five root waiting for them. Soon, the race began, but they didn't know that a small person with dark skin was watching the whole thing and frowning. This is going to cause trouble, so I'd better send the message to Lord Ains right now so he can take care of it. She turned on the crystal in her hand, and as soon as the message was sent, she saw someone come out of the town dressed as a civilian man. They changed places and soon became a woman with dark hair, light skin, and a ponytail that went down her back. Did you learn anything interesting, Nabarel? She sighed. Yes, Lady Aura, from what I've heard, the shinobi in the leaf are planning a secret mission where they will try to raid the Land of Spring and make it look like enemy shinobi killed the queen there so they can put someone they can control on the throne. Aura frowned. Ains wouldn't be happy about that, since he had some kind of relationship with the queen when he was human. He put her on the throne, so she owed the freedom of her country to him. Oh, I see, she said. That's another thing we'll have to deal with. She shook her head. On the contrary, Lord Sivas is going there now to make sure nothing bad happens to her and to meet with her so he can introduce her to Lord Ains again so he can meet the woman who works for him. She nodded her head. Yes, she is thought to be his one true love in this world, Nabarel said. It makes you wonder how she got away without being caught. I heard that she escaped after surprising her old team when they tried to raid Spring and force her to submit. When this happened, her team was killed, but Anko was saved from the same problem. This gave her power and protection, but the Leaf doesn't know this. They just think she is hiding there with the protection of the ruler, but she is the top interrogator there and the spy controller for the whole country. Interesting, he said. Then I can't wait to meet her. They both left the forest area and went deeper into the trees to get back to the tomb. Tomb. Naruto just heard what the hidden leaf was going to do, and he didn't like what he heard. As Naruto, he wanted to stop this from happening, and as Ains, he knew he couldn't speed up his attack to save her. If he went himself, the whole land of Konoha could come after them, and he would have no way to defend himself. But he knew he could send one of his servants to take care of the problem. Since Shaltier is there, she would draw attention to them, and Koikutus is in mist, they would be in trouble. At this time, the only people he could think of to send there were Albedo, Demiurge, the maids, or Sevis. He knew that Sevis couldn't go because he had to go to Spring to help them with the spy problem. He also knew that the maids only worked with people of the tomb and that Beta couldn't go because she had already been in Wave. Albedo would be a good choice, but he might kill the girl by accident out of disrespect for her and the people who were trying to save her. Demiurge and the other maids were sent away. He snapped his fingers because he thought this was the best choice. She bowed her head and left the office to find both of them. Albedo, send Demiurge and CZ here right away. This is very important. Naruto frowned as he sat in his office and thought to himself, if it's true and Kayubi is gone, doesn't that mean the rest of the biju are gone, too? Would make sense, since the idea that one is gone would mean that the others are going away, too. Hagoromo was the only one who designed the biju, 
so that means he is out there, but no one knows where. He hasn't been gone long enough for him to come back, so where did he go? Maybe later I'll ask Saiken or the Three Tails if they know. As he came out of his thoughts, he saw Demiurge and a girl with red hair who was dressed as a maid and had green eyes that were aimed at him. They were bowing to him. Oh God. She was more often called, Lord Ains, because she was a machine. He knew that her fighting skills were perfect for this mission because even though she was hurt, she would still move forward and kill the person in front of her with her weapons. Anyone who got in her way, she could kill. Demiurge, CZ, as much as I want to waste time talking about how important this meeting is, it will have to wait. You are to go to Taki and find a girl named Fu. She is about to be taken by Shinobi from the Hidden Leaf. As a former container, I will not let this happen. At the same time, strategically, this can be a chance to cripple a huge part of their forces and show the world how powerful we are. Do this and make. Demiurge smirked. As you wish, my lord, we will leave right away, Naruto said to CZ. Weapon access. Full unlock. She knew what he meant and bowed to him before they left the tomb and went to the land of Taki. Naruto saw Zesh walk into his office, but before he could say anything, he saw Albedo staring at her and their auras clashing, which made him sigh and think this was going to take a while. Spring. A woman with black hair and a gold crown was sitting on her throne in her room. This is Koyuki, who is also known as the ruler of the Land of Spring. In her shadow stood a woman with purple hair who was wearing a tan trench coat, a fishnet shirt, and a brown skirt. This person was Anko's security and someone she could trust because of her long history with Naruto. Since he died, Koyuki has been cold to everyone who betrayed him, especially those from Konoha, and is not afraid to kill anyone who crosses her path. But that's not the case right now. In front of her was an old man with one eye who was looking up at her with a neutral face. Please tell me again why you're here, I asked the man. A group of shinobi have broken into your palace and are planning to kill you as soon as they find you in this throne room. How do I know you're telling the truth? He asked. He reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a small orb that had a holographic projection of five men with blank faces running through the halls and looking around while killing some of the servants who saw them. I know this may not have been in the series, but it's my story and I think it's a cool tool to have in this case. Koyuki was very angry. Did these men think they could do something like this and nothing would happen? Getting back to the man. What do you want in exchange for this information? The man asked with another bow. Simple, my lady. My lord wants to meet you and the woman behind you now that everything is over and they are free to come. Koyuki frowned. She didn't trust the old man but he did tell her about the plan to kill the Shogun, and that was something to think about. Okay, if you can handle them, we'll make a deal, he said. The doors opened, and the root men came out of the shadows. Take away the threat to Konoha, they said. They ran at Koyuki, but Siva stopped them and smacked one of their heads with his hand, sending him flying across the room. Next, he kicks the guy behind him to the queen, who has Anko use her kanai to cut him in half. When the other men saw that their friends had been killed, they moved quickly to charge Sivas. All enemies of my master and his allies will die. He took a stance with his right hand in a fist in front of him and his other arm under the elbow of his left arm. The rest of the men made hand gestures and shot different sized fireballs at him, but he beat them all with single punches and then jumped into the air and dropped his heel on one of the men's heads, causing it to explode. From here, he grabbed another by the mask and crushed his head before pushing him in front of an approaching Tonto blade. There, he pushed the man down and put the dead body on top of him. Then, he turned around and hit the man in the head with his heel, making a loud crack and causing his head to bleed out on the floor. The last man standing there was terrified. He was an old man with no chakra flowing through his body, so how did this happen? He turned to run, but as soon as he did, a snake bit him. He fell to the ground with a thud. The poison worked quickly and made him the last corpse. They were confused about how they could have failed their mission for their lord if they were on the right path. Sivas bowed to her when he saw her. My lord will be here in a week. He walked out of the palace without caring that he had killed people. After all, people were stupid to try to fight him, so why should he care that their dead bodies were all around him? Taki. Fu was very angry. First, her village kicked her out, then a group of people from Konoha told her they wanted to use her as a weapon, and now she was trapped on a cliff with nowhere to go. She was able to kill one of the groups, but the others kept pushing her. She found what they did to their last container disgusting and didn't want anything to do with it. 
But because there were at least ten Anbu and some Junin and Chunin with them, she was afraid she would have to use the Seven Tails power to get away. It looked like she had to do that or someone would take her in as a pet, which she didn't want to happen. She would rather die than become a pet. Even though Chomi wasn't always easy to get along with, she still wanted the poor thing to be free from this madness of being sealed and controlled as a weapon of destruction. Give up, monster. You're surrounded, and Konoha wants you to be our loyal weapon. She growled. Go f asterisk 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 yourselves. The world will find out what you did, and soon they will burn your asses to the ground. Hardly, little girl. The lead Anbu charged her, but then there was a loud bang and he fell to the ground. The back of his head had a hole, and blood was pouring out of it. The group was scared, and the Hyuga looked around to see where the shot came from, but there was no chakra in the area. But there was a mocking clap as a man in a suit with a black mask on his face and black gloves walked out to greet them. A girl in a maid's outfit stood next to him. She was holding a big grey or black thing and leaning it on her shoulders. Who the hell are you guys? Kiba was the first to say something when he saw that two people he didn't know had killed their leader. That is, the rest of the root shinobi had to take charge. The person in the mask laughed. How interesting, we were just in the neighborhood and saw that you scum were planning something against this poor girl, so we decided to get in the way. The root growled at him. Should have kept moving, because Lord Danzo and Konoha are so great that you have to die for them. He pulled out his sword, and the green girl said, you're going to die for them. Target locked on. Changing weapon status. The gun gave off a small glow and then changed into a long black tube. She stood in front of the man and pulled a small lever at the bottom of the gun while it was pointed at his head. With a loud bang, the weapon blew his head clean off, and his brain matter and blood covered the nearby Anbu. Too easy, said the man in the suit, who grew long claws. This is your only warning. Turn around and go back to your village. If you don't, join your friends on the ground. Kiba growled. Fuck you jerk, we'll kill you, and we'll use that stupid girl as a weapon for our village. The rest of the route moved quickly towards the man, but he sighed. Can't say I tried, but I wouldn't expect anything different from weaker beings. He quickly swiped his hands at them and walked past them. Seconds later, they fell to the ground in bloody chunks. With the route gone, only the rookie team remained. He knew from his lord's orders that he didn't care about most of the people in the group, but the Hyuga idiots, the boy with pineapple hair, and the kid in green spandex were the only ones he wanted to kill personally. Aside from them, he didn't mind if they killed the others. Remember, dear, there are some you should save for later, CZ said. Understood, sir. She changed her gun from a shotgun to a large M60 machine gun, pointed it at them, and said, eliminate. She started shooting at the group without warning, and Shikamaru yelled, eliminate. They quickly split up into different groups when Demiurge told them to, scatter. Demiurge just stood there and watched. He thought the ponytail would show that CZ fought from far away and might not like fighting up close. So, they would try to get closer to her, but the truth is that she has ways to deal with them even when they are close. Tenton said, her weapon is only good for keeping us at a distance. Lee, get close to her and try to stop her attacks, and I'll cover you. Roger, Captain. She pulled out her kanais and started throwing them at CZ, but when they hit her, they bounced off her skin or broke. Lee, on the other hand, took off his weights and ran after her quickly. When he got to her, he yelled. Leaf Hurricane. He kicked her head and said, Leaf Hurricane. CZ said. Barrier. A green barrier surrounded her, and when he kicked it, it burned and made him scream in pain, even though the attack only hurt his leg. When she saw that he was hurt, she turned her gun on him and put a small hole in his other leg. CZ was also using magic bullets, which disappeared as soon as they hit their targets, so no one could study them. Targeting, weapon change, he said. Her machine gun went away, and two holes came out of her hand. She ran quickly towards them. Ino was set up and shot by her own just you. Mind transfer jutsu. When she hit him, her body fell apart, and CZ stopped moving for a second. The group thought that Ino did it, so they only had to deal with the person in the mask. But as soon as they were relieved, CZ turned to the blonde's body and fired a dark green energy that turned her body into ash. No. Shikamaru couldn't believe that the girl not only fought off Ino's jutsu, but that he also killed her. He was going to ask her out on a date sometime in the future, but he couldn't do that now because she was gone. 
He growled at the girl and said, you're going to pay for killing my teammate. CZ only looked at him for a second before turning to the others and seeing the two Hyugas use the moment to close the distance and start hitting her chakra points. Neji and Hanada yelled. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. After each blow, she felt it hit her in the chest before hitting her in the head. Hanada gave a snort. No one will be able to escape the wrath of the Hyuga clan, Neji said with a sneer. Trash shouldn't have fought fate, they said. CZ was frozen, and they were sure she was dead this time. Even though it cost Eno her life, stopping this monster was worth it. Weapon Configuration Pistol They saw that the girl had a small device in her hand and easily put two rounds into the Hyuga's legs, making them scream in pain. Hanada was furious. All that training had been for nothing, and now she was being treated like a weakling again. Shikamaru was sad because they couldn't figure out how to hurt this girl with red hair. She was able to fight them at a distance with those strange weapons, but other than that, she didn't seem to be hurt by most close-range attacks. When he thought the time was right, he quickly put her in a shadow bind and yelled. Tenton, go for it. Throw all the tags you have. She nodded, and without warning, she sent at least 30 tags at CZ, causing a huge explosion that shook the whole cliffside. Now that the smoke was up, he let go of his shadow and waited to see how they would hurt the girl. But because he feared the worst, he yelled. Kiba hit her. Even if she's dead, it's better to keep hitting her to be sure, the man said. Kiba nodded his head and gave a pill to his dog. Both of them turned into people. They quickly turned around, making tornadoes, and ran at the dust cloud, hoping that his family's jutsu would definitely kill the girl inside. After running through the cloud for a few minutes, he stopped his attack. When the smoke cleared, the people of Konoha saw a horrifying sight. No way. How could this be? This sounds like a bad dream. CZ was just standing there, unharmed. Her clothes had soap on them, and she was just staring at them with the same blank look she had before. Shikamaru couldn't believe it, because those two moves should have killed her, but she didn't even look like they hurt her. With a frown, he realized that their chances of winning had gone from a lot to none. They couldn't win by hurting her in any way. Before Shikamaru could come up with another plan, he heard Tenton scream and saw that the masked man had cut him up badly. How could he forget about him? Well, that was disappointing. I thought you Konoha Shinobi were going to give me and my friend a challenge, but that's not the case. Oh well, might as well put some of you out of your misery at least. Without looking, he stabbed Tenton through the head, making Neji scream. His love was gone, and he had to watch the monster take off his claws, step on her dead body, and wipe his shoes and claws on her. He was angry and wanted to attack the man, but he couldn't because something hit him in the leg and kept him from getting up. Next, Kiba ran at him, but before he could reach him, a barrage of bullets hit one of the two wind spirals, causing it to crash to the ground and reveal Akamaru. Akamaru. The man laughed. Too easy. Without warning, he rushed at the boy who stopped spinning and sliced up his back sending him to the ground with a thud. He got on his back and told CZ to do it. Without warning, she called up another short-barreled weapon and fired a large shell at him. His body was caught in a huge explosion and spread all over the cliff face. Demiurge walked away from the attack without getting hurt, smiling behind the mask. He could feel how sad they were, and he loved every minute of it. Even though he wanted things to move faster, he loved seeing how the humans slowly gave up when they realized they weren't going to win. He watched as they used up all their remaining strategies before giving up and giving up hope. This would be the ultimate win for him, and the more they tried, the happier he got. CZ wasn't hurt by any of the attacks because she was an automaton and had the ability to not be affected by chakra. At the same time, he knew that her powers and weapons were unusual, and that she could easily kill most long-range fighters while they were making hand signs. Shikamaru finally had enough. They had already lost too many friends today, and he didn't want to lose any more. He turned to Shino. Lee, Neji, Hanada, and Shikamaru are being taken away by Choji, who has turned into a giant version of himself and is running across the landscape. The bug boy nodded his head and gathered his swarm to cover his teammate's movement. Shino was about to run away at this point, but he saw a big firestorm coming and heard his hive screaming. This scared him because the hive was dying and he knew it was because of the girl. She was holding a weapon with a big tank on her back. The nozzle was spewing fire, and a small flame was flickering in front of it. The attack was very bad, and before he could move, he was caught in the flames. 
For the first time in his life, he was in so much pain that he was screaming, and he slowly burned to death. CZ put away her weapon when she saw that the bug boy was dead, and then she turned to Fu, who was talking to Demiurge. Fu knew that her orders were simple, let the ones who got away go. Their mission went well, and she might get a special reward from the other people for doing her job well. Demiurge told her why they were there and what they could do for her. At first, she didn't believe him, but after she saw what they did, she realized that she had a better chance of staying alive with them than with the people who were coming after her. So if I join you guys, you'll protect me, my biju will be set free, and I'll be able to live with her and the rest of you? Yes, but you would be part of a new branch of servants we would have around the tomb, so you would have to work for some of the floor guardians and Lord Ains. She thought about it and sighed. Okay, but if I'm going to dress like a maid, please make it look like hers. He laughed. You go well with the other people in the tomb. Without warning, they teleported away from the scene, leaving the bodies behind for wild animals to eat and for Taki to see and think that their demon did it and be afraid of what she was planning for the future. Kumo Outskirts Ains, now in human form and with Zesh by his side, smiled as he looked at the war-torn city. It's time to start, Zesh said with a smile. Yes let's have fun my master. The first big step is now being taken. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.